and Marina went down four floors. She was alone in the house. But the three dogs that she looks after alerted the neighbors. And the neighbors came to inquire why the dogs were barking like that. And as they peeped over the parapet wall, there was Marina, Marina on the ground, blood all over, groaning. So they all came round and said, we have to take her to the hospital. And then she says, no need, I am well. And she gets up. Anyway, she was taken to the accident service, kept there for one and a half days under observation. Not a single bone of her body is broken. I mean, that's God. 40 feet down, she falls. And this morning, she came upstairs and she testified. And she said, I am alive. I am alive. You didn't have to do a funeral service. In fact, the police came to the hall, the accident service and said she attempted suicide. They wouldn't believe that she fell. They wouldn't believe that a 57-year-old lady would climb up to the water tank to clean it. But God has put her alive. And I said a sign and a wonder. All things are possible. Awesome God, isn't it? And, on, and, I, and I took courage that anything can be done if we have if we have great, great gratitude and love for our Father in heaven. Take courage, my brothers and sisters. What is that impossible situation before you this evening? Remember, God who held up Marina, sent angels to hold her up. That same God will bear you up on his angel, on his wings. Isn't that a wonderful Father we have in heaven? So, and she testified this morning and said, God, spare my life that I might serve you. Is that your response when, when an amazing thing takes place? When the natural is turned to the supernatural? Or do you take, forget about it? If you have, it's time, it's this night is a night of great opportunity to renew your commitments to the Lord. Serve the Lord with all your heart. And going on in the story, it's in moments like this that we can fall down before the Lord with wondrous worship, just the way Ruth did. Why have I found favor in your eyes that you took notice of me? Because we can never find the answer within ourselves. When we say, why did I find grace from you? We can never find. You know why? We are not a beautiful people. We are not a righteous people. We are people in sin and in rebellion. That's where we are. We did not know our Lord Jesus Christ. But, but God, but God loved us even while we were yet sinners. That's the hope of the gospel. He extended His grace to us and that's the only basis on which you and I can worship Him. So let's worship Him with all our heart. You know who God is looking for? Those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for worshippers. Give Him all your worship. So we've seen the many evidences of God's grace in our in how Boaz took the initiative and spoke to Ruth. Boaz encouraged Ruth. And finally, we find in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 9, just the verse previous, he says, look what he says, I have heard of everything you have done for your, verse 9. See which field they are harvesting and follow them. Haven't I ordered the young men not to touch you? When you are thirsty, go and drink from the jars the young men have filled. Can you see? Look at Boaz's promises to Ruth. He, he says, look, I have not only stay with these my young women, make them your friends, fellowship with them. You have come from where, no doubt, you don't know anyone here, but make friends with those who are working for me. And then he says, I have, and I have told the young men, not to touch you, not to reproach you, the scripture says. Not to in any way harm your dignity, to uphold you and to honor you. 
That's what Boaz is promising to to Ruth. Saying, stay in this field. Look at here his plea. Stay in this field. You will be protected. You will find friendship. You will find not only that. When you are thirsty, you know that in 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 Israel, water is a very precious item. To get water, you have to go and and go with a vessel at a certain time and draw that water out. But here he says, you don't have to do that. You don't have to tire to go find water for yourself. There's water that my young men have drawn. You will have access to all that. That's the kind of, of protection I want to give you. And at mealtime, boy says, come and eat here. And, and he was so and she ate, the scripture says, and was satisfied and took some home for her mother-in-law as well. And when, verse 15, when she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, let her glean even among the sheaves and don't reproach her. And also pull out some from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean. Don't rebuke. What is he saying? Boaz is surprising Ruth. Not only the little things that have fallen off the reapers, but he instructs the reapers from the bundles, leave some behind for her. Much more than her labors, she is being rewarded. Amazing. Do you see your Savior's work in your life? Much more, the much more grace of God. We didn't deserve it. We didn't labor for it. But he provided the way for each one of us. So the scriptures are recording for us the blessing of fellowship, the acceptance and the satisfaction of being in the field where Boaz instructed her to be. Boaz instructed the young men to protect truth and the young women to work with her in fellowship. In a real sense, Ruth is in a protected fellowship. And this is exactly what God envisions for each father and mother, each husband and wife, for each family, for your little family unit. This is exactly what the father envisions, determined to love, because it's a protected place. Each home is protected. It is God's protection over your life. And this is exactly what, what the Lord envisions for precious friendships that we have in the house of the Lord. This is exactly God's vision for the church family. That we are in fellowship and in a protected land. We are, we are to have others who walk with us, guide us, and counsel, rebuke us if necessary. These are the one another's of the scriptures. Without this, our lives will be so barren and bare. And a fine, before I close, a final, final third point. When your heart is fixed and determined, and your eyes are on your divine destiny, you live in your Bethlehem. You know, Ruth had to leave Moab. Ruth had to leave her people. Ruth had to leave her gods. Ruth had to leave her father and mother. Ruth had to leave all the false gods of that land. And she had to take that step of faith and hold her mother-in-law and walk towards Bethlehem. And as they walked towards Bethlehem, as they sighted the towers of Bethlehem, you know, she did not know that God's arms were around her. Unknown to us that the Lord has been guiding each one of us to our Bethlehem. And as you live in your Bethlehem, you will find Bethlehem means house of bread. It's the place of favor and blessings. Remember in, in the in Bethlehem means the house of bread. It's the house of the Lord. And in Bethlehem, remember there is a Boaz. Remember in Bethlehem there is free grain. Remember in Bethlehem there is God's protection. Stay in the field. Stay in God's field. Don't go to glean in another field 
was Boaz's guidance to Ruth. God was blessing Ruth already, and all because the Lord guided her to Boaz's field. The Lord, it was the Lord who guided her, because if it was only grain that was she was after, it was the time of harvesting. Every field, the reapers were full. The fields were full of reapers. They were working fast and to avoid the heat, they were working hard and fast. If it was only grain that she needed, Boaz didn't have to say, don't go, stay in the field, stay in the field. It's the same for you and I. Because Boaz was aware more than Ruth, that if she stayed in the fields, she would be blessed and she would find companionship. Companionship among the women. And she would find protection amongst his work, workforce and that she would find refreshment, the water and the grain that she needed. When I take uh, marriage counseling with people who are getting ready to get married, I always tell them there are three covenants that we can never break. A covenant is something that you cannot break. A contract, okay, when the, if the job is not done to satisfaction, you can do away with it. That's how the world treats marriage, like a contract. If everything doesn't work out well, okay, you can, you have your choices and options, but not in, in the kingdom of God. Marriage is a covenant, it till death do us apart. That's the word of the Lord. And the second covenant I always tell them is your covenant that you made with your Lord Jesus Christ. Actually that's the first, the covenant of salvation. When just because your prayers are not answered double quick time, you know you don't leave your lovely Lord Jesus and go after other places looking for answers and solutions. You stay with Jesus because your life with the Lord is for all time. It's for time, for, for time and for eternity. It's an unbreakable covenant. When you say covenant is unbreakable. And the third one is your relationship in your church family. It is also a covenant. In this day and age, most Christians don't understand these covenants. So if there is grain somewhere, you go and pick it up. No, that's not the way. Boy, I said, stay in this field and use this grain. Yes, there is grain in other fields, no doubt. But Boy, I says, you stay here. You stay here and receive the grain that is being dropped off for you. And Boy, I says, surprises for Ruth. And asking the men even to drop something from the bundles. Did you get, did you see this? Did you see the wonderful veins of God? These are covenants, and if we keep them, if we keep our part of the covenant, you will find our heavenly boys will surprise us. He will surprise us. And because Ruth heard that guidance of Boaz, she didn't know him much, except as a, as a wealthy man. But she heard, he, she listened to his guidance. And because she listened to his guidance, finally she became a Gentile woman became a bride in Bethlehem. A gleaner turned out to be her leadership. All because she listened to the guidance of Boaz, this man of integrity and God-fearing. How are you this evening? How are you in your relationships? Are they covenantal? Will you keep them? Till death do us part. That is marriage. But the other two never cease. Through time and eternity, those covenants last. And, you know, one last comment. Most people, most people, most husbands and wives, most relationships between friends, church relationships, family relationships, we like what we see because we like 80% of what we have what we have with us. We like it. We like that 80% because we built those that home together. It's a home that we built together. Husband and wife built it together. 
brought for children, planned for their future. You built the house of the Lord together with others. You like 80% of what you see. You like 80% of the friendships that you have, that you have acquired along the way. You like 80% of it. But there is a 20% that there are imperfections, disagreements, 